enter line 7 from this worksheet on form line 40, line 10. So the amount from line 7 from the worksheet will go on line 10. But okay, in our case, we didn't pay state unemployment tax and don't intend to. So line 9, 17.54, which is line 7, 324.85 times 0 0.054. And that's if all your taxable food wages you paid were excluded from state unemployment tax. So how did we come with 17.54? You can do the multiplication here, or uh, you can go to your spreadsheet to double check it as well. So pretty much it's going to take the uh Taxable food wages times four times five point four percent. So that's pretty much how we tailor this spreadsheet to the scenario that all your taxable food wages are excluded from your state unemployment tax. And is take is giving us seventeen point fifty four dollars. So. Uh, 54 cents so we have it and we left line 10 and line 11 blank so part 4 line 12 total for a task after adjustment is line 8 plus line 9 plus line 10 plus line 11 and that will be one dollar 95 cents plus 17 dollars 54 Cents and that's nineteen dollars forty nine cents. And you can double check it as well with your spreadsheet. Total food tax by employee is calculated in the table, but on top of it, we have form nine forty line twelve part. And nothing that's part two. It will be part four. So that's nineteen dollars forty nine cents. We do have the a total for a tab as well, which can track employees. Um, pretty much for a you pay by month, and the total by year by employee, and the total for the business by month and by year as well. So that will give us that $19.49. So line 13, for a tax deposited for the year, including any overpayment applied, applied from prior year. So if you have excess that you could have uh, asked for a refund, but you prefer to apply it to the following year, which is you know they it happened in the past and you apply to this to 2021 you'll put that amount if you have made deposit during the year of 2021 you will enter as well any deposit you made for 2021 you will enter on line 13 in our case we didn't make any deposit so we are going to leave a blank and let's talk about deposit a little bit if your full task is more than $500, your full task liability is more than $500 for any quarter, you are required to make deposit. And you make deposit, you pay IRS using uh, e electronic fund transfer, EFT. And you do that through EFTPS, electronic Found transfer payment system. So that's uh, a platform they have. IRS has you. You will sign up. The account is free, and through that EFTPS, you make payments. I will call it deposit. You you make tax deposit to IRS throughout the year via EFT. So if you know your 
Total liability is more than 500 for a quarter. You have to make deposit. So you have to track your payroll by quarters and you have to track your full tax by quarter. So I try to have the quarter total on top in the tab total fura and that's a tab that is not in the old version either so the way it works is when a quarter you have for example two hundred dollars for a tax liability you are not required to make a deposit you can but you are not required so the following quarter if you have three hundred then that's five hundred fifty so the month that will follow the end of that quarter you need to make a deposit for that full amount 550 so it's good to track your full tax by tax liability by quarter so that you make your deposit on time to avoid paying penalty on it so if at the end of the year you are filing your form 940 and the quarter four, your total tax liability for quarter four is more than 500, you need to make deposit and pay all your tax liability for FURA. So if your total tax is less than 500, you can pay it with your form 940. So let's go back to the form. So deposit here, we didn't make any, we leave it blank or we left it blank. So line 14, balance due. So if line 12 is more than line 13, enter the excess on line 14. So line 12, 1949 is our full tax liability is more than line 13, which is zero. Then on line 14, we enter $19.49. So if line 14 is more than 500, you must make a deposit. If line 14 is $500 or less, you may pay this with your return. Line 15, overpayment. If line 13 is more than line 12, enter the excess on line 15. And then you check whether you want um, a refund or uh, if you want to apply to the next return which will be 2022 return that you'll file in 2023 and in that case that will go on line 13 for 2022 return that you'll file in 2023 so that means line 13 if there is an overpayment that you want from prior year that you wanted to apply to line 30, you need to pull your 2020 full tax form 940 to see if you check uh, if you check apply to next return and what the amount is and you'll put it on line 13 for 2021. Otherwise, if you make any deposit for 2021 during the year for 2021, that's just why we'll go on line 13. Or if you didn't make any deposit at all, then you leave it blank. So now let's go to the next page. The next page, you need to add your name. Now your business name, but your, your name as the main owner of the business. And you'll remember to add the business identification number. Now your SSN, but the business EIN. So part five of form 940, line 16. So first, report your full tax liability by quarter only if line 12 is more than 500. And our line 12 is, 12, is $19.49. But if, since it's for $19.49, which is less than 500, we can leave this area blank and go to part six. But I'm going to explain a little bit how Power 5 works. So, line 16, report the amount of your full tax liability for each quarter. So, if your line 12 is more than 500, then you will need to complete line 16. Do not enter the amount you deposited. If you have no liability for a quarter, leave the line blank. 
Okay, so line C C N A, that's the first quarter. Line C C N A. So if you go to your spreadsheet, Torofura tab, you have your quarters. And let's see, it is by quarter here as well. So if quarter one is blank, you didn't have any liability, you leave quarter one blank. If quarter two, let's go back. If quarter two was 700 and you deposit 700, you leave quarter two blank because they say not to enter the amount you deposited so the amount if you make some deposit during the year the quarter for which you make that deposit you will need to take it out as well so they don't want you they want you to just list your total liability what you owe now what you pay so far so and then quarter four and quarter five and pretty much that's fine So the quarters are just to telling your total by quarters and the total is pretty much storing all your employees by employees for tax by month. And again, total for is just total unemployment tax. It does not include wages here is all about the tax liabilities or the tax so that's how you will complete your fuller tax liabilities so if it's you, you know it's going to be more than five hundred dollars at the end of the year it is important you track your tax liability by quarter it will be a little bit challenging if you have not set up your spreadsheet at the beginning to do that but it will be good if at least when you make pay, uh, payment when you pay wages to employees if you um, include the dates that you can later add rows to include the month and then create tabs to you know to sort things out by quarter it will work for you so that's one way to um adjust your spreadsheet as well so now that you know line a part five is not applicable to us and we left a blank and by the way if you have to complete line cc part five your total liability for the year which will be on line 17 should equal your total liability on line 12. That's why they say what you deposited should not be um, included in it. Okay, so total must equal line 12. The thing is line 12 does not exclude deposit that you made during the year that's your total task for the year so do not enter the amount you deposited well if you made deposit during the year and you do not include it your line 17 won't equal line 12 so it make me think that you will have to report all your full tasks for the year but you have to report it by quarter and the total line 17 will match your line 12 not line 14 because line 14 is after you take the deposit out so if they want your line 17 to match line 12 even if you make deposit during the year, it won't matter. You have to report your full tax liability exactly the way you track it throughout the year. Um, throughout the year. But 
yeah, you can read the instructions regarding that. That's why sometimes I found IRS uh, instructions and kind of con they contradict each other, just like two sentences in it will contradict each other. So alone on part five, they don't want you to, if you make deposit during the year, not to include it, but then they want your line 17 to match line 12, which line 12 does not even take your deposit into consideration at all. It comes into consideration after. So if your total tax liability will match line 12, then if you make deposit during the year, it won't matter. You have to report your total ta uh, for a task uh, by quarter, regardless of whether you make a deposit or not. Before your line 17, which is the total of all the quarters to match your line 12. That's the way I view it. But it is your business. Use your best judgment if you have to fill up line 16 to see how you will fill it up. So, now line upper 6. Uh, may we speak with a third party designee? I like to just say no. If IRS had an issue with your phone, they might just contact you yourself. So, they don't need to contact somebody else. But if somebody um, file the form for you and you want the person to be answering questions on your behalf then you can enter you can check yes and enter the person's name and phone number and you'll have to choose a pin that IRS will work with and just keep in mind that they will be addressing they will be interacting with the person not the person's business if you are using a tax professional, it's going to be the person that file your form, not the business that the person work at. So, part seven, sign here. You must complete both pages on this form and sign it. So, you will print, you will uh, pretty much tap in your name, your position in the business, and your phone number. And then you are you are done. Pay preparer, you only you leave a blank. If you are filing for your business, you leave a blank. If you are a task preparer filing for a business, another business, and you are paid to complete the form, then you'll enter your name. You you'll sign it after you print it out. You'll date it as well. But you enter your name, your business name and address and city and if you are self employed you check it and you will have to enter your P10 your business EIN number phone number and zip code so but otherwise if you are filing for your business you just leave a blank like if for instance I'm filing for Liberman Consulting and I'm an employee of Liberman Consulting but Liberman Consulting is not paying me for filing this task they are paying me for work that I'm doing the business Therefore, I will leave a blank. So, I'm just filing for my own business, so I'll leave a blank. But if I was filing for another business, then I will complete this session. And I will enter my P10. So, we notice that we have a task liability 1949 that we need to pay so we are not going to make a deposit because it's less than 500 we have options so we are going to then go one step further and complete form 940 v if you are going to make deposit for your business though you just end it after part seven you are done you print the copy out you sign it you did it and you Print it again to uh, to file the copied version for your business record. But if you are going to um, add payment to your form 940, then you need to complete form 940 V. So I'm going to scroll down, and form 940 V, you'll enter your business identification number. You'll enter the amount you owe, which is $19.49. You'll enter your business name, the address, street address, and then you'll enter the zip code. So how the form works is when you print everything out, 
you will cut out the voucher. So the voucher will be separate. You fill up a check and you will enter uh, payable to United States Treasury and you'll enter the dollar amount, you'll enter the date and you will the memo area of the check you'll enter form 940 for 2021 and you will enter your business EIN number. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Five is the dollar amount. I'm not counting the date. We have to date it. And we have the signature. I'm not counting those two. But that's five things you have to add to the check. And then you'll add the check to the voucher, but don't step them together. You'll add the sign from 940 to an envelope. I will suggest 9 by 12 or 10 by 13 envelope. You add the form 940, you step off form 940 together. And form 940 ends on part 7. So you step all those together and you'll have form 940V, which is the voucher, and you'll have the check. So you'll add those two to the form. So that will be three things in the envelope. That will be three things in the envelope and you will mail it. So now we complete the form 940, a federal unemployment tax. But how are you going to mail it? What address are you going to mail it to? You will go to instructions to form 940 and let me see if you can find it. Probably page 4, it has the mailing address. Okay, page 4. So, in the first column, you will look for your state. And you will know if you have a payment to make or not. So, if you do not collect any salary from your business, you are the only employee from your S-Corp and, and you didn't collect any salary, then your full task is zero. You will still need to file full task even if you have zero employees or zero wages paid. You will complete it, but pretty much everything is going to be blank, like dollar amount wise is going to be blank, but you enter your business information. So. That means you are going to file Form 940 without payment when you do not have full attacks to pay because you do not have, you know, you didn't pay any wages. So you are going to mail your full tax form to the address that say without a payment. If you are going to make a deposit, like, Pay IRS online, make a deposit, and you are now going to add payment to the form. You are going to mail your form 940 with the address in the column that say without a payment. In our instance, though, when we have $19.49 and we complete the form uh, form 940V, that means we are going to add payment to the form. So we are going to use the address from the colon with a payment. So you locate your state and you find the address in the colon with a payment and that's the address you will put on the envelope. And I like to go through the instructions first, find the address right on the envelope and file the envelope. Then when I'm done, I print things out, I'll put it in the envelope. So in this case, when we have $19.49 check to add to the form, we will use Internal Revenue Service PO Boss 93-2000. Okay. So 
So if you live in Delaware, for instance, and you are going to mail your form without a payment, then without a payment, that's the address you should use, Department of Treasury address. So if you live in Delaware and you are going to add a voucher and a check to the form 940, then you then you are going to use with a payment address which is Internal Revenue Services to mail your form 940. And when you mail the form, you might use USPS first class with tracking. That way you can track it online and put the receipt with the form with the copy of the form in your business file so that you have everything together and the proof that you file it, the proof that you mail it. And please, form 940 unemployment, federal unemployment tax is due by January 31st. So complete your form on time and mail it on time. Thank you so much for your time. And if uh, you are looking for the payroll spreadsheet, it will be on uh, ninasoap.com. I will add it to, to it and it should be there. You can give it a try, but yes, keep good track of your payrolls so that at the end of the year is easy for you to file your federal tax returns related to payroll including form 944 an employer employer annual federal tax return of form 941 employer call the federal tax return or to file W-2 and W-3 with Social Security Administration or to file Form 940, Employers Annual Federal Unemployment Tax Return. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, you all that watch our videos. Thank you for all your comments and I thank you very much, you all that subscribe to our channel. I'm Afia V. Lieberman, creators of Lieberman Consulting LLC, YouTube channel, ninasoap.com our blog. We do have our online store liberdownload.com where you can find digital templates to help you manage your money and your business. And we do have checklists, uh, business task checklists for things you should gather to file your business taxes. So I'll have links in the description as well. And we have ninasoap.com our blog where you can find free downloads templates and you don't need to subscribe to access those free download you'll click on it and you'll access it you won't you, won't, you are not required to subscribe or to enter an email to access those free downloads and we have liber label.com for custom apparatus and stationery liberoutlets.com for uh Resell product and Nina's soap.com for natural product. Thank you so much for your time.